They're back. These brutal bad boys are out to destroy yet again. Only this time, they're more chilling than ever. Enter the Cybermen. Do that. There we are. That's a nice shaped window there. Oh, OK. That's nice. And St Paul's can be there. It's a very cold Saturday morning in, uh, in Cardiff Bay. 992, take two, B camera only. And action. I never, never knew. You never asked. You never said. It's the beginning of us finding out about cyber industries. I got Cut! There's a lot of people involved, and, uh, and there's a big crane, which is always quite difficult to choreograph. Filming in Cardiff, set in London, we take down any signs that sort of refer to Wales. We'll put up the odd underground sign. A couple of added touches. Fingers crossed we get away with it. I'd like to do a two-shot that develops and that stays on you all the way through, David, so I get a single out of this. So, basically, what we've got here is that at a certain moment, which we will tell you by saying, stop, OK, you will stop, cos you're getting info on your earpieces, all right? Two things to add to that are, when you stop, you come to a natural stance, so you don't all suddenly stop. We run like up in the air or whatever, and yeah. you're hypnotized. Background! Action! Speakers. I suppose we're just taking it for granted. You never said. It's Mickey. I think what's tricky is all the starting and stopping, because everyone has to stop dead. Stop. As this download happened in their heads. What are they all do? Stop. It, it is using things that are happening in the modern world, and maybe that we have a slight paranoid fear about as well. This whole idea that that we we get information downloaded, we download it into our computers, we download it into our phones. It's just a short hop to downloading it straight into your head. People want the latest technology. That's what they want. That's what they're after. And you know, how many people do you see walking around with? the Bluetooth attachment now. There you go, yours are done. Thank you. That's a bit tricky, actually. Um, it's a sort of a prop that we could really do without for 40 essays. Okay, just hold that there for a couple of seconds. Tapping into sort of modern paranoias and modern obsessions, you know, things that people get joyous about as well, is upgrading, that notion of upgrading, that notion that every year you can change your phone and, and your MP3 player and, and, and if you don't keep up with technology, then you're going to get left behind. Like Bluetooth attachments, but everyone's connected together. It's on my phone. News, international news, sports, weather. I think it's always good to just tap into those slight worries that people have about modern life. Mobile phones, which people are now absolutely reliant on, and yet at the same time, I think we're all still slightly nervous of them. They get it direct. Downloaded right into their heads. We don't really understand them, most of us. We don't really know how this information comes into this little plastic thing that we carry about. Daily download published by Cybus Industries. No! <laughs> That's what's chilling about those episodes. That's what's clever about them, too. That's sort of where the Cybermen come from anyway, this whole idea that, that, that the modern technology will slowly replace us and that, that modern technology is ultimately out to get us. Oh, OK, I give up. Let's go and see you. Good. That's... What we see that. throughout that episode, just this whole idea that, that it'll just slowly creep up on us and we won't quite notice it happening, which just makes the, the fantastical scene that worryingly bit closer. Yeah. 
Doctor! We brought the Cybermen back because I think you should always bring back the great, good, iconic Doctor Who monsters. So long as you can slightly reinvent them or, or have something new to say about them. The Cybermen had to come back. They're the kind of returning villain. You know, the Daleks and the Cybermen. Cybermen. That's what we're up against, Commander. Cybermen. People sort of end up looking forward to another battle with the Cybermen. <laughs> The Doctor must be taken alive. You must suffer for our past defeats. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. We called the episode Rise of the Cybermen to create a buzz so that people would know, and kids would know who might not have seen them before, but they'd know there's something big on the way. Locate and destroy all animal organisms. When they were invented in the 60s, it very cleverly touched into fears of transplant surgery, body re organ replacement, uh, the butchery and the body horror of that, the physical horror. What is it? I think it's their, their leader, their, their controller, Jamie. When the Cybermen first appeared, they look, probably to our eyes, a bit ridiculous. They've got cloth faces, they're, they're wearing enormous, bulky sort of space armor. That's what the Cybermen were, sort of flesh becoming metal. I think the Cybermen work best when you're aware of what they are, when you're aware that, 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 they are, that they're a race of human beings who have become this rather inhuman thing. The original frighteningness of the Cybermen came down to the fact that they were sort of like vampires. That they didn't want to take over the Earth, they wanted to take over everybody on the Earth and turn them into Cybermen. You will be on the first of a new race of Cybermen. What makes them chilling is the fact that they were like us, and now they want us to be like them. It's working. There's a very powerful businessman called John Lumick, who runs Cybers Industries, who is dying and is using all his technological might to find ways to upgrade. Kill him. <laughs> if the Cybermen hadn't existed, we would be inventing something like the Cybermen anyway, so bring them on. Are they robots? Far worse. You must withdraw your men. They don't stand a chance. You're just a pathetic bunch of tin soldiers skulking about the galaxy in an ancient spaceship. You will speak unwisely. As a race, the Cybermen are uniform. That's one of the scariest things about them. They all think the same. Kill them. It must be destroyed. We are invincible. Kill them. They are a killing machine, and they are built to kill. Correct. The most frightening aspect is that they are emotionless. You're robots! We are called Cybermen. Our brains are just like yours, except that certain weaknesses have been removed. They've replaced their whole bodies with plastic and metal, so they have no emotions, they have no feelings, they, they feel no pain, they feel nothing. Emotion, love, pride, hate, fear. Have you no emotions, sir? Mm -hmm. I do not understand that word. I think that's the thing that's kind of frightening and terrifying, the fact that it is a human being inside there that has been mutilated and all pain and all fear of pain has been taken away from them. The price of living forever is to cease to be human. <laughs> Activation of reinforcements. We will survive. 
We will survive. And to survive into the 21st century, these metal monsters had to look the part. To be working on the Cybermen is just a, a fantastic thing. It's a privilege because the, you know, the most iconic Doctor Who characters, I think, were the Cybermen and the Daleks. He is an alien. Aliens are not to be trusted. The chance to do the Cybermen is, is just fantastic. We must act quickly. Prepare to activate the device. Designing the Cybermen, it's been an interesting process, and they've changed a lot over the years. The Cybermen sort of seem to thrive on being redesigned for their, each appearance, so that people think, oh, what do they look like this time? Stay where you are. You killed him. It was important that, in many ways, they looked like something made in a science fiction program in the year 2006. We just started the way we do with anything, which is do drawings and pictures and and work from there and present them up. They had to be the Cyberman for the 21st century. You want to keep the icons, you want to keep the ear handles, you want to keep the black, blank eyes. There's always a brilliant detail from the 70s, I think, that there's a little teardrop in the corner of their eyes that says somehow that they're sad underneath for what's happened to them. It was a great big accordion like chest pieces now, we've replaced that. Modern version of the logo, or the Cybers logo, but something there that sort of says who they are and what they are. Also, they have to look really like metal. They want Russell really wants them to look machined. One of the most important things, in my mind, was to stop calling them silver. Steel. That's what they're made of. That's really what they always were made of. I think, in my mind, fashions change, but but also industry fashions, means of presenting things within science fiction, have changed and. And materials, you know, lightweight plastic and stuff like that, and, and, and has been used by every production team. And I like the fact they felt free to sort of change it as it went along. No one person sort of designed it. It really was a team effort. Construction of the Cybermen is quite a long process, but having to do it all as a sculpture, one great big clay sculpture on a body cast. Modeling, mud pushing, putting clay on top of clay and giving it the right shape until we're happy. The hard bit about making a Cyberman suit like a robot suit is that it's very hard edged, it's got to be symmetrical when with a robot, something that's supposed to have been manufactured and machined and you know coming out of a factory line, it has to be kind of squared. And that's the tricky bit. And once that sculpture's done, we'll take great big silicon molds of that. And those molds from that will generate fiberglass sections, which will have a special metal coating. And that coating, when buffed up, will hopefully just look like the whole thing's made of metal. It will really will look like a, he's armor plated. They have that segmented feel, the, the, the modern mechanics seem to be made out of in science fiction uh, with its own little spins as well the, the handles the ear handles are continued in sort of little handles along the arms and along the thighs as well so that that's become more of an overall design we're using one of our performers um paul casey we've used him as our kind of yardstick because paul's the right kind of height shoulder width etc at this point it's you know to make it all work make it all fit and comfortable and get as much movement out of it as possible it's in parts. You know, once we get onto set, everything will be linked together. Oh, it's gonna be fantastic. I think we're gonna have a bit of a wow factor, I think. The steel finish that Neil Gordon's given the skin is with the fact they burnished steel. It's just like they've taken the best bits of all the Cybermen throughout the years. They always look slightly beautiful. There's a sort of art deco-ness about them as well, which gives them a sort of timelessness somehow. Oh, I love them. They're absolutely gorgeous. <laughs> an idyllic country home in the tranquil Welsh countryside. It's a cold and misty Monday in the sleepy Vale of Glamorgan, and preparation is underway for the social event of the century. It all seems to be going to plan, but not for long. Nothing better than a party that turns into a death trap. In that survey. 
Do you want to know what's going on? Work in the kitchen. It's the whole thing started to come together in the script. The Cybermen were 40 years old, and we wanted a very rich Jackie, and they started to go, oh, actually, what if it's her 40th? <laughs> Now, I'm not giving a speech. You know, why would she have the president of Great Britain in her house? Sweet, you know, isn't that a nice idea, that? <laughs> the whole episode is heading towards the great and the good, all sipping champagne and being posh and being lovely. <laughs> what better thing could happen than the French windows are smashed in by great big monsters? OK, let's go for a shake next, please. Turn over, please, on both three, three, one, take two away from the mark. And action! It's happening again. I've seen them before. What are they? Cybermen. <laughs> <laughs> they were invaded by Cybermen, which is lovely. I'm setting up to do low angle wide shot on each window and, and the DV camera tight on the, an area where the fists are going to come through, and that's the first one. As soon as you no see dialogue. it smash, you're, you are protecting yourself because you're okay, you know, if you close your eyes, you'd cower. What I'd like to see is on action, the Cybermen are stepping in, everybody's screaming, crowding into the centre, the Cybermen all surround, settle. And then it goes quiet. There's a silence. And in the silence, nobody, no, nobody knows what's going to happen, what's going on. So, this. Smash. This down, step away. Yeah, we've got that. We have one three hour session basically to do that moment of those Cybermen crashing through the windows. The first time you really see them, you really know that the Cybermen are there, is when the fist comes smashing through windows. Three or four of these monstrous characters step through. You hear action okay? Yeah. By the time we finish, it feels like there are 20 Cybermen in that room. Okay, guys. In the end, I hope everyone will find it terrifying. So they've well and truly burst back onto our screens. But there's more to being a Cyberman than meets the eye. Getting this far took weeks of serious training, and it all started like this. couldn't just cast 10 extras and have them stand about in those suits actually we said actually they've got to be very fit and very dedicated to wear those suits all day but also they've got to be choreographed we're working very much um, to create a good cohesive unit of people and are able to just work off one another what I'm doing with the artists has resulted from discussions with with Graham also I'm working along the lines of the script to know what's going to be expected of these people once they're in their costumes. We've got to find a very definite cyber movement, which is very strong. You've got to go with the movement that fits the suit, which is obviously military, strong, very butch movements. <laughs> I wondered when I first met her, how is this woman going to get this big butch load of guys to do the thing I want them to do? Well, she did. She was really good. Cybermen 
Cybermen march remorselessly, relentlessly. They're just a power force coming forward. As you're seeing here, the inner workings, in a way, of what will be the outer suit. And if you see the force of the power coming forwards with them as they are now, once that suit is on, it should be pretty mind blowing. <laughs> Without her, it would have been a shambles. Would you deny my family? Time for the Cybermen to take centre stage. And the job of creating that spine-chilling voice lies with one man and his microphone. Here I am with my uh, lip mic and my ring modulator here. Just uh, I hear their lines coming in here. I speak into here. It comes out in a speaker over there. This experiment ends tonight. <laughs> Compulsory. The Cybermen have been through a lot of voices. We have not failed. Our computers are assessing an alternative plan. The Cybermen don't have such an iconic, unchanging voice. When you become as we are, you will serve the cyber race well. Every time they brought the Cybermen back, they did something different. Uh, I remember the guys with the sack faces. Yeah. yeah. But that was with the strange but, intonation. And they speak a bit like this. Our scientists and doctors devise spare parts for our bodies. Which sort of kind of slightly undermines their scariness. Perhaps you can see that your planet is a great and imminent danger. You reach the 80s and they all sound like Darth Vader. Prepare for our arrival on Telos. They start saying things like excellent. Excellent. I think, well, actually, to a Cyberman, would he know what excellent is? Would he not just say satisfactory? <laughs> Maybe it's not such a good catchphrase. I had several conversations with the director, Graham Harper, on the phone. They can't be Darth Vader, but they need to be kind of a butch, strong, deeper voice than they had gone before. Be prepared. Otherwise, it doesn't feel right. We have been upgraded. Into what? The next level of mankind. We all had the rough impression that he was going to be robotic. We are human. Point two. Emotionless. Every citizen will receive a free upgrade. I wanted a sort of a little bit of a buzz and a monotone underneath it or a flatness to it. You will become like us. Our starting point is that sort of continuous nim 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 thing. Upgrading is compulsory. And if I refuse? I'm telling you, don't. I put a different ring modulator effect on it, but we're going to do other stuff to it in post-production. 345, take 28, camera mark. Action. You are not compatible. What happens then? You will be deleted. <laughs> For 40 years, the Cybermen have terrorized and intimidated, striking fear with their dreaded deathly march. An important thing about the Cybermen is their uniformity. In that sense, they become soldiers. All individuality has been lost. You know, part of the point of the Cybermen is, is how frightening they are en masse. The Cybermen are, I guess, Doctor Who's most military monsters. So, you know, you see them as a sort of unfeeling army, really. You've got a whole swathe of them marching across the screen. Nothing will stop them. And if someone gets shot, well, another one will come along and take its place. So in that sense, they are frightening just by their sheer numbers. Big, robust. Uh, very muscular and, and scary. And it's, it's very powerful. And it's quite scary when you see them all charging across a lawn at you. She is not your lover! Come on! That was a big shoot that night. We were also blessed with the weather. We had this wonderful kind of mist 
sitting across the, along the ground. So as, as this fleet of Cybermen marched out, you just got this wonderful silhouette coming towards you. They're the big, scary army. We've done it. So could this finally mean the bitter end for our fearless friend? Is this almighty force too powerful for even the Doctor to talk his way out of? But this is a surrender! You will be deleted. Does he survive? Is, he, is this the end of him? All I can tell you is, watch out for Mickey. Uh, action. You've seen what he can be. Sideman, over here! It's good to finally see him step up to the plate. Come on, you brain, it's not the Come and have a go. And what a time for Mickey to have to pull out all the stops and rise to the occasion. Outwitting and defeating the Cybermen is no easy task, but it's now or never, and this is his big chance to make the giant leap from zero to hero. Just when you thought these chilling creations held all the aces, someone is about to play their trump card. Episode 6 is then adventure, adventure, adventure all the way. It's the 40th anniversary of Doctor Who's Cybermen, so they're taking a look at lots of robots and stuff in Machine Men Time Shift on BBC Four Now. Next on three, Grown Ups. <laughs>